Greetings, everybody. My name is Dr. Vivek Darga. I'm a junior resident at Justice Case Medical Academy at Mangalore. Today, we are going to discuss about MDCT evaluation of acute non-traumatic vascular mesenteric pathologies. Mesenteric pathologies, especially mesenteric ischemia, are increasing in incidence as the population ages. High morbidity and mortality rates are largely related to delay in diagnosis of these conditions. Conventional angiography has always been considered to be the gold standard for the diagnosis of ischemia, which is an invasive procedure. Whereas MDCT is now regarded as the first line imaging modality to confirm the clinical diagnosis or suggest an alternative condition which may explain the patient's symptoms. The aims and objectives of our study was to present the characteristic multi-detector computed tomography that is MDCT features of non-traumatic acute vascular mesenteric pathologies. Ours was a retrospective study of 15 patients which included 9 men and 6 women who had underwent CECT study between January 2020 to September 2022. These CECT examinations were conducted with GE 128 slice CT scanners at the Department of Radiology of Justice K. Segre Charitable Hospital at Mangalore. Images obtained during the arterial and the venous phases were analyzed for the presence of findings involving the mesentery in patients who presented with acute abdominal pain and who had no history of trauma. Moving on to the results of our study, the age distribution ranged between 26 and 73 years with male predominance. Uh, the male is to female ratio for our study was 3 is to 2. The causes of acute mesenteric pathologies that we have covered included mesenteric ischemia. So out of these 15 patients, 7 cases were of mesenteric ischemia, 7 cases of omental infarction and 1 case of epiploic appendagitis. The demographic data of patients who presented with mesenteric ischemia. So out of those 7 patients, 6 were males, 1 was a female. Uh, out of these seven patients who uh, were diagnosed with mesenteric ischemia eventually, five of these patients presented with acute abdominal pain. One patient had a history of infective endocarditis, while one patient was a known case of pancreatic carcinoma. The findings in patients with mesenteric ischemia, the most common finding that we found was hypoenhancement of small intestinal walls, uh, small intestinal loops, followed by features of small intestinal obstruction, pneumonia. Uh, pneumatosis intestinalis and presence of SMA thrombosis, while mild ascites was seen in two patients, which was the least common finding in our study. So here we can see axial and a sagittal image, arterial phase, a MIP image, which shows the presence of a thrombus in the superior mesenteric artery. So here we can see there is absence of contrast filling, which suggests presence of thrombus. This is an actual image which shows the bobble loops being very thinned out, uh, which is what we call as paper thin small bobble loops. So because of ischemia, the bobble walls will become very paper thin. Some of the uh, patients also presented with features of small bobble loops. Here we can see there are multiple dilated small bobble loops with air fluid levels and prominent valvular conventus. Here we can see air density is noted within the wall of the small bobble. Okay, which is called as pneumatosis intestinalis. And the pneumatosis intestinalis was uh, quite severe in one case, which also extended to involve the portal vein and its branches. So here we can see the actual image and the coronal image showing the presence of air within the portal vein radicals. The second condition that we considered was omental infarction. So we had seven cases out of which four were males, three were females. So these cases were clinically presented as uh, right lower abdominal pain uh, who were clinically diagnosed as acute appendicitis in four instances, uh, while these patients presented with right upper abdominal pain and clinically they were suspected to have acute cholecystitis in two cases. Whereas one patient was a female who presented with left lower abdominal pain. She had a history of hemorrhagic cyst in the left ovary in the previous scans. So based on that, uh, this presentation was clinically suspected to be a rupture of that hemorrhagic left ovarian cyst. So we performed NDCT of these patients and the, the clinical finding that we found in all of these cases was, so there was involvement of the greater omentum. The lesion or uh, the fat density, fat stunning that we saw was about round to oval in shape. It was a fat density lesion with fat stranding and we could not define any continuous or any peripheral margin for this lesion. Etiology of omental infarct 
primary infarct as we will discuss ahead. So in these cases, we could not find the cause of these infarct. So hence the name primary infarct was about five cases. And secondary infarct, so these patients who had secondary infarct, they had a history of inguinal hernia previously. So that was the cause of omental infarct because of the torsion in these cases. Moving on to MDCT features of omental infarction. So uh, something, uh, a sign that is typically described as whirl sign. So it appears as streaks due to the whirling of omentum on its vessels in a concentric pattern. Usually these lesions measures more than 5 centimeters are about triangle, oval or uh, round in shape. They are heterogeneous fat density lesion and they do not have any uh, enhancing grain. Usually, these are not associated with any bowel wall thickening. However, if the omental infarct is close to any adjacent bowel loop, so a reactive wall thickening in those particular loops can be seen. So, this is what is defined as the world sign. So, the arrow that you see here, so this was about hazy omentum with concentric hyperdensity and whirling pattern. As you can see, it's like a, a cyclone as it whirls around in the right iliac fossa and which is abutting the cecum posteriorly as marked in the image. This was another case which showed a fat density lesion with hyperattenuating streaky infiltration between the abdominal wall anteriorly and the transverse colon posteriorly. So this was a case of omental infarct in the right iliac fossa. So the patient presented with RIF vein and clinically uh, what was suspected uh, from the surgery department was likely acute appendicitis. However, this was the CCT finding. This was another case which, uh, which demonstrated axial and coronal contrast images uh, showing oval fat density lesions. Again, we can see that bold sign and streaky appearance uh, with the broad base towards the parietal peritoneum. The region was noted here again between the ascending colon and the anterior abdominal wall. Another image, again here we do not see that classic bold sign. However, we can see very uh, uh, hazy and a streaky appearance uh, of uh, fat density mass in the right iliac fossa, which is again abutting the parietal peritoneum. And this was one case uh, which was a case of secondary omental infarction. So this was area of fat density, as you can see this curved arrow, herniating into the right inguinal region. So the patient already had right inguinal hernia and the omentum was content of it. So because of the omentum twisting, uh, the omentum, regional omentum underwent infarction, which gave rise to patient's symptoms. The third entity that was epiploic appendicitis, we 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 encountered one case. Um, that one case was a female. So this again a patient uh, presented with left lower quadrant pain, and uh, uh, she was suspected to, to have a ruptured hemorrhagic ovarian cyst again based on a previous ultrasound report. So it was just clinical suspicion. So the finding that we found in this particular patient with epiploic appendicitis was a paracolonic ovoid fatty mass. It was well-defined hyperattenuating rim around the mass. So unlike omental infarct, here we could make out a very well-defined hyperattenuating rim and occasionally a central high attenuation was found. So the reason for all of these findings was, why do we see it as an ovoid fatty mass? Because epiploic, append uh, as we discussed, ahead, epiploic append uh, appendices, they are, usually, uh, they are usually tubular fatty structures. Uh, a well-defined hyperretinuting rim was found because it represents the inflamed peritoneal lining surrounding it. And why do we find a central high attenuation areas? The reason for that being the thrombosed vessels in the center and because of the hemorrhage, the area appears hyperdense. So this was that image which showed a very well, uh, a very well-defined rim enhancement here and central high density because of the hemorrhage and this peripherally enhancing uh, rim represents peritoneal inflammation. So this was a case of epiploic appendicitis in the left iliac fossa but clinically the patient was suspected to be having a ruptured hemorrhagic cyst. Moving on to the discussion part. So mesenteric ischemia occurs when there is compromised blood flow to the small intestine. It is typically classified into two types, acute mesenteric ischemia and chronic mesenteric ischemia. We'll be dealing only with acute mesenteric ischemia. So in acute mesenteric ischemia, as we move ahead, the causes can be because of either occlusion to the arteries or vessels, or it could be non-occlusive. So when we talk about occlusive, it could be either occlusion to the arterial supply or occlusion to the venous supply. 
So again, in arterial supply, a thrombus would be forming or eventually it may embolize. Whereas in venous, the occlusion would be definitely because of thrombosis. So an acute mesenteric ischemia is one of the most serious and life-threatening abdominal conditions with an estimated mortality ranging up to as high as 80%. Emboli to the SMA, superior mesentic artery, are typically associated with cardiac arrhythmias such as atrial fibrillation. Now, why is SMA very prone to, uh, to be getting involved in it? It because SMA has a wide caliber lumen and it has a narrow angle takeoff as it originates from the abdominal aorta below the celiac axis. And hence, these conditions make the superior mesentic artery more susceptible to these emboli. So if you have a large embolus, it will most often lodge in the proximal part of SMA because a larger embolus will not be able to go beyond it. And hence, it will result in extensive involvement. Whereas smaller emboli will lodge further more distally and may affect only small segments of bowel and owing to availability of collateral flow, the rest of the bowel loop may be saved or may not be involved. Just like we mentioned about occlusion of the arteries, so uh, ischemia can also occur because of thrombosis of the mesenteric veins. However, it's a very lesser common cause of mesenteric ischemia. So patients, uh, particularly with hypercoagulable states or who have polycythemia or patients who are taking oral contraceptives are susceptible uh, in, uh, in presenting with thrombosis of mesenteric vein leading to ischemia. These were the causes of these were the occlusive causes of mesenteric ischemia. However, there could be some causes like non-occlusive causes. So these occur when there is a decrease in the blood pressure, typically associated with either cardiac failure, trauma, widespread sepsis leading to septic shock, or certain drugs like cocaine, which result in splanchnic vasoconstriction to preserve blood flow to the heart and the brain. So in these conditions, what is happening? As such, there is no occlusion in the vessels supplying it, but because of the decreased blood pressure, the, uh, uh, the condition uh, may arise, that is mesenteric ischemia. So emboli to the superior mesenteric artery accounts for approximately 50% of the cases, as we mentioned, the white caliber lumen and a narrow angle takeoff from the abdominal aorta. These are the conditions that usually will... Uh, will tend to involve the SMA more than the other arteries. The second condition is omental infarction that we discussed. So the greater omentum is a large peritoneal fold and is continuous with the visceral peritoneum of the stomach and the transverse colon. It contains fat and blood vessels. Most commonly, infarction occurs on the right side and it is likely due to a long and mobile omentum. However, this need not be necessary. Omentum, as we know, it covers the entire abdomen and hence a mental infarction can take place anywhere. This omental infarction was classified by Lettner et al. in 1952 and it has been cited in many studies. So the classification that they give is into primary and secondary. So secondary omental infarction is caused due to torsion of omental vessels caused by adhesion between the omentum and any pathological foci. So in our case, we the pathological foci was hernia. It could also involve surgical scar or any tumor. So because of these conditions, the regional omentum may undergo torsion and hence may undergo infarction. Whereas primary omental infarction is called when a no, uh, when, uh, when we could not identify any cause. The third condition was epiploic appendicitis. So again, this is a very close differential diagnosis on CT for omental infarction. So appendices epiploike are pedunculated fatty structures which arise from the serosal surfaces of the colon. So what basically is the pathophysiology of epiploic appendicitis is these are pedunculated shaped and they are quite mobile. So sometimes they can undergo spontaneous torsion as a result of which they could either, either undergo ischemia or hemorrhagic infarction which will lead to low focal inflammatory process and hence later on inflammation leading to epiploic appendicitis. So what happens is when they get when they undergo torsion uh, and when they bleed, so it will have a central hypertense region and the peripheral rim that we discussed is because of the peri uh, peritoneal inflammation. So these were the three conditions. So the take home message from today's paper presentation is that MDCT depicts mesenteric ischemia and its underlying causes, also its severity. Knowledge of imaging findings of various mesenteric pathologists can guide further life-saving interventions in serious conditions like acute mesenteric ischemia. 
at the same time it can also avoid unnecessary surgical interventions in self limiting diseases like appendicitis and omental infarction so all these cases of omental infarction and appendicitis in our institute were treated conservatively for 2 to 3 weeks and all of these patients had uh, uh, had basically no symptoms after that treatment period and hence unnecessary surgical intervention including uh, laparoscopy or laparotomy was prevented in all these cases because of the diagnosis based on MDCT features. Omental infarction should be considered important in the differential diagnosis of acute abdominal pain, which can mimic acute appendicitis. These were the references for my discussion. My name is Dr. Vivek Ramesh Nerga. Thank you. Thank you very much.